anybody have eyes on the gate? I, I can't see it right now. There's some creepy guy standing at the gate. It kind of looks like that Canadian prepper guy. How's our food and inventory situation right now? We're getting pretty low. Take him out. Threat neutralized. All right, guys, so we're back here at our Copia Family Freeze Dry. We're gonna be talking about perimeter security, home security, home defense. Everybody likes to be G.I. Joe. Everybody likes making booby traps. So that's what we're talking about. Today. Yeah, well, right. regrettably, I'm gonna share some stuff, but hopefully it's helpful. Some good tips and everything's kind of dual duty for farm and security. Very important nowadays, you know, if we're entering a recessionary period, Crime's gonna go up, people are gonna get more and more desperate. It's only a matter of time before people are gonna realize, hey, you know, there's a lot of stuff outside the city. There still is that general sense of hospitality in the country that some people might want to exploit. So for that reason, we need to be vigilant. Now, we are at your front gates. Uh, we came up here, we, you were immediately triggered because you have a new system that you installed. Yeah, our, our old system, we just had a cheap motion sensor thing uh, with a chime alert on it. And we were getting so many false alarms from wildlife, birds even. So this new system we got is uh, a magnetic sensor. So it only detects vehicles. And we have it set up that it transmits on all of our radio frequencies as well. We know well before you show up at this set of gates. Is this FRS? This is just your standard two-way radio, but this is the FRS frequency and also can transmit uh, ham and CB radio at the same time. So we all have, we have our specific channel for out here. Yeah. But two-way just for the kids transmitting and stuff, we're training them and the, the driveway alarm goes off on theirs as well, right? So it's like, dad, like gates, right, they say. Somebody comes onto your driveway where it, there's a magnetic sensor somewhere here that's directed in this direction or, or what, what, how does that work? So underneath the, the driveway is a buried electromagnetic sensor okay. that's wired up to a transmitter on the gate, sends the signal to the chime alert. And that's right kind of where we drove in. It's just kind of shuffled on one side of it. Uh, but you pretty well drove right over it and I think it's got a 20 foot sensor. I mean, I know a lot of people have issues with Amazon and Alexa, and, but nowadays the ring systems are pretty good at, uh, the AI on them is pretty good at determining what's what, like if there's a person there, even though <laughs> I get a lot, I get a few false alarms too, like they will get rabbits pass by and they'll, you know, in the middle of the night, 4 a.m. it'll say there's a person at your garage and you know, you get this notification, it's like shit, you know. It's on now, and then there's this rabbit back there yeah. just chilling. So there, there's, it's getting better, but you know, and then there's that whole big brother aspect of it that not a lot of people like, but, so if you can do something like you're doing here, which is completely hidden. That's our first level of alert. Like if I'm out in the field or behind the shop and we all get a ding, right? And I'll, I'll message like, like, hey, hey boys, you see something at the gate or whatever? Yeah. And then, yeah, there's a, this car. Well, what does it look like? Okay. Yeah, so level one is the alert. We go over this in our home security video where you have these various concentric circles, these layers of defense, right? And the first level is alert and uh, detection and relaying that to you in some notification. Exactly. And then the second level is going to be like a surveillance component. So you also have uh, cameras out here which can yep. see what's going on out here. So after you get the notification, then you can look and see exactly what's going on out here. Absolutely, yep. and the cameras are set to record everything uh, not on the cloud or nothing on our own system so we can go back and see any any activity that that took place at this choke point. People often will take the path of least resistance, especially criminals who are inherently lazy. So what you've done is you've, you've created this perimeter fence which is multi-layered, but you only have this one place of entry where you can funnel people through. Exactly. Okay. This is also just a 
standard farm shelter belt properly planted to block our wind to protect the fields and our yard and everything. The fences doubles as, as good pasture fencing, like goats are hard to fence as it is, yeah. so they need a good fence. You so wanna, this is multi, it actually has a real a function aside just security. For sure, keeping the yeah. goats in, the coyotes and the two-legged predators Out. at bay. Yeah, this is the sea buckthorn, so it's got a massive thorn, even worse than a rose bush. When this hedge is fully grown, the deer can't even penetrate it, like they won't touch it, so let alone a person on foot. Person. It's not, not fun, right? It's not fun picking the berries. <laughs> yeah, gonna be a bad start to their shenanigans, that's for sure. This prairie wind is just insane, like yeah. planting trees is just just good for everything, I think. So, so this is just a, a bushy, fast growing. Yeah, that's plant. it's called Okanese Hybrid. It's very fast growing. It only has a 30 year lifespan, so it's not the best for longevity, but just fast growing and privacy. So this tree is seven years old and it's 16, 18 feet high. It's pretty yeah. good. But it's then a, this protects the next row, the maples are, take their sweet time growing. These yeah. are all seven years old. And then evergreens in 30 years, man, this is gonna be nice. These are not fun to walk through either. You know, just a simple spruce tree. They can be a force to be reckoned with as well. You know, I mean. Yeah, and a lot of babying, but uh, they're all established. Every single tree I babied, watered, and it survived. And yeah. it's gonna be beautiful. Nobody will be able to see anything from any point or yeah. any road. Eventually those trees will get so big it'll it'll end up touching the fence. I was blessed with about 48 miles of barbed wire, like rotten barbed wire. You can't even use a spool thing to spool up the darn stuff. So I just dr drag the old fence as I clean it up so the goats don't get stuck. Mike, what we're talking on the way up, it's all about deterrence and delay. Those are like the main things because you never want to actually engage anyone if possible. So you want to make your property as least enticing as possible. This gives you a delay. You're... They're going to have to bushwhack through this. Then they're going to need, you know, bolt cutters to get through that. So they're going to need the more tools and then. Yeah, one look at my place and they're off to the neighbors, right? But... Yeah. And another thing I noticed about your property, and I don't know if this is by design or just a consequence of the natural layout, is you have a, a bit of a Fort Knox thing going on here where you know, the whole principle of Fort Knox is to have wide open spaces all around so you can see everything. But you can basically see this whole area from your house. There's a clearing, so there's no bushes that people, like with the exception of the perimeter, there's no bushes that people can kind of hide in in, in advancing yeah. to your home. So there, there's a, a fine line you have to make this sacrifice, privacy and the open space. So if you give up privacy, uh, you're gonna have better better sight visual. But I kind of have two, I've got privacy, but if they get close, and this is a military thing, you want no place to hide, no hay bales, no nice boulders, no divots where somebody can hide, and an open space clearing. So it's, they're exposed if they're c coming in uh, for quite some time, and it's very dangerous for whoever's attacking, right? I see a lot of people who they have that privacy around their home, like they'll have a, an acreage like you have here and then they'll shelter their home with trees. And somebody so then, could be on you. Yeah, somebody could yeah. be on top of you real quick. There is nothing, you're completely exposed up here, nowhere to hide from cameras, nowhere to hide from our uh, safe and secure zone for us to defend. This is for today, it's not for Mad Max, but it does work for Mad Max. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a practical utility, there's wind blockage, there's uh, like you say, predator uh, blockage, either two-legged or four-legged. It keeps your animals in, you know, it just provides you peace of mind. So there's more to it than, you know, just preparing for the end of the world. Yeah, like but those that comes and, sea, sea buckthorns, like it's a perimeter, deer perimeter, everybody perimeter, privacy, yeah. but the berries are also extremely good for you. So you can go right. harvest food as well. It all just works. It's yeah. Zombie apocalypse permaculture. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's not snowing out, but it looks like it. This is just poplar seed. Those this is this are. is what we deal with in Saskatchewan. If it ain't winter, it's still snowing here. Anyway, so I'm coming up, and I'm noticing on the ground as he's coming up in his quad, all of these coins on the ground. 
And then I, I figure he's joking when he says to me, hey, I, I could have, you know, got the jump on you or something with the... Then I'm like, are you serious? Did you actually put these coins here on the ground? And he said, yeah, I actually intentionally put these coins on the ground. What did you say, a few rolls or something? Just scattered? Yeah, a, a roll of, of non-copper pennies, the newer ones, is 50 cents, right? Yeah. So when people see money on the ground, even if it ain't that much, you know, you're inclined to want to pick it up for some reason. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and I would have got shot oh, yeah. or I would have, you know, would have bought some more time. So like you're, were, you come up, you're wa walking around like, and then, ooh, a penny, right? Yeah. I stopped you. You're still stopped. You're still stopped. Like my kids could have got you. <laughs> if you've got a uh, farmer acreage, these are standard for leveling your gravel, or you could even like put seed in the ground with it or take up some weeds, but. What is your, it called? It's your standard diamond harrow. So I just, you know, have them to store them up by the front gate. That's where I use them anyways. But I mean, if something goes south, doesn't matter how good Nate's bumper is. <laughs> you mean my truck can't get through this? No. Well, it depends how much you like your tires. So. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad day for my tires, I'm thinking. So obviously, I would get out of the truck and I would just move them out of the way, right? Yeah, and meanwhile, like how many eyeballs are on you? So what is over. this chain for? Well, I got two posts in concrete here. Yeah. Like half decent. So whatever, piece of aircraft cable or something. Because you can get out and move these in two a minute, right? Yeah. So if you just were to put a few padlocks on that, tie them to the post, it doesn't even have to be that secure. It's going to take you five, ten minutes to figure out how to move this. I'd never do this, and I don't recommend anybody do this, but I'm just saying... Hey, look, these diamond heroes upside down, that's kind of dangerous. Well, perfect. <laughs> it's all about delay and deterrence. So none of this stuff is foolproof. Obviously, with all these things we're talking about, I mean, you could cut the chain, you could move the thing out of the way, but then you got, it's just creating more and more things to buy you more time to respond, essentially. Exactly. That's, that's... Or to just make it so that the person doesn't want to rob you in the first place, right? Exactly. So here we are at the gates. Now we're talking about how there's a psychology to going in to a place, creating the feeling of going into a place. When you have a set of gates, even if they're wide open, your brain's telling you you're going through a set of gates. When you have signage that says private property, no trespassing, that sign is usually enough to deter anybody. It's like you give them, give them a feeling, right? When you have a closed set of gates, most people aren't even going to check if the gate's locked. But when you have that and and good posts on the side, but you, you do it so you're actually driving under something, you hit them with about every level of psychology that I could think of type of thing. The difference between having no gate is that it doesn't create that sense of I'm going into somebody else's space. Therefore, you know, it, creating that reluctance to perhaps proceed. And you were talking about the more levels. So here you have the two beams on the side. You have a very, uh, what I would call, intimidating. That's just an old uh, power pole I got for next to nothing. And there is, you know, the things that go through my mind is when I'm doing things is this psychological aspect. So I guess even... what we're saying is that this has a greater psychological effect than it would just to have the gate. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you go into a space, the, the gateway or the entrance way into that place is going to kind of lay your expectation for the experience. Well, if I put some of my deer antlers up here, I guess that, that would let somebody know the type of person that would be here. Maybe that's something I haven't thought about. There's a lot of a psychology that just goes into the entrance way. And it's one of those things that's gonna add another layer of deterrence. In the video we did on using signage as a deterrent, we showed probably a dozen examples of things you could write on a sign. That One of my favorite signs that I would use is looters will be sniped. Don't write this on a sign, it's probably totally illegal to do here in Canada. Yeah. Looters will be sniped, but think about the psychology between looters will be shot and looters will be sniped. Sniped makes you think long range. Sniped is much scarier because that tells yeah. you that, you know, we can get you from a long range. Shot entails, oh, well, if I'm seen, you know, if I have a close encounter, but sniped is saying something else. Sniped is saying that there's not gonna be any negotiation. 
I like it. You yep. know what I'm saying? For sure. So yep. you can use that one if it all hits the fan. I might just yeah. do that. Just, yeah. <laughs> just don't don't snipe me when I'm out here picking up coins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just on the inside, you know, you have some. What do I got? Some gloves, some fencing staples, and some p extra padlocks. Uh, lock deicer in the winter. Aircraft cable and barbed wire. So you, you can deploy all this stuff pretty quick if we're at that point in society breaking down. But and you also have a fence after they come in. Yeah, when you come down the driveway, you're met with the second set of gates and the second fencing around the yard. Now the yard it is also fenced that protects the goats from coming in and eating our garden and stuff like that. But the driveway uh, kind of splits two pastures uh, to get in the yard. So it's a real choke point with two separate levels of security, an outer and an inner. So we're now on the road that goes into your, your property, into your house. And along the roadway, you have these signs along the way. And I think this is something that people often, like, often will commonly use, you know, they'll decorate their fence posts with uh, skulls or whatever the case might be. And, you know, the further and further we go into Mad Max, that's when we get to the head, heads on pikes phase. Well, it's, an, it's just another method to slow people down. If somebody's gonna read one, they're probably gonna like deter their eyeballs from, you know, my defense to, <laughs> it's a distraction. Yeah. It's a distraction. All right, guys, a quick word of advice. If you find yourself roaming the post-apocalypse, don't come here because your ass is probably going to get sniped. You're going to be picking up pennies. You're going to be going through thorn bushes. You're going to be getting entangled in fences. And you're going to get mauled by a very vicious dog. But I would encourage you to go and subscribe to Arcopia. Dean's got a lot of great stuff, especially if you're building a passive solar greenhouse, a wealth of information, just a general homestead, all the rest. Anything else that we're missing? No, well, we still have our freeze-dried smoothies and support this guy there at CanadianPreparedness.com. Um, get them while you can. I'd say get them wherever you can get them. And if you don't know what those are, go and watch our review. We've done many reviews on them. For sure, and I hope this video was helpful. Some of this stuff is uh, disclaimer only used for after the fact, but... Yeah. Um, I guess we should have said that first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do this yeah. stuff now. Yeah, yeah, for do sure. this stuff after SHTF. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high-quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.